Morning. Right, here's Harry. Sometimes gets confused with Freddy, who used to be our lovely cat who got run over. But he's just a lovely, lovely boy, this one. But he's not going to smile, he's trying to get on my seat. He's, uh, he'll be two in July, so he's still a young cat, but he's, he's lovely. Thank you, mate. Come and smile to the camera. No, all right, off you go. Where is he? Oh, he's off. He's off to the garden. Right, I'm trying to arrange this so you can see the paint. I'll put that back a bit to there. Uh, and I just zoom out a little bit. Oh, I can't zoom out. I'll just take the camera back there a little bit. Okay. Now I hope that's going to work. Right, I'm, I'm using uh, this palette, this old palette that was <coughs> it's not been used very much, but I, 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 I use it sometimes if I feel like doing watercolours on holiday. I've got a cup of tea here. I've, I've sketched this uh, just this rough estuary uh, type of painting um, with, with a simple simple fisherman's house, cottage, coast guard's cottage. We'll have a couple of little boats. I've got to anchor that one somehow. Uh, I'll just take a bit of that pencil out. It, well, I don't really use pencil. I use... Where is it? Uh, I use these graphite sticks. This one was a new one and I, I dropped it so it broke so it was about that much longer. This is a, a, a BB, 2-2-B, 2-B or not to be. Uh, they're lovely things to use and they've got this nice varnish finish so that they, the graphite doesn't go in your fingers. Just sharpen it with a knife and a bit of sandpaper. Right, okay, colours. Well, I've, on this, in this palette, I've got, um, I've got some alizarin crimson, a couple of pans of ultramarine, I've got cobalt, Payne's grey, cadmium yellow, uh, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, hooker's green, raw sienna, burnt, burnt sienna, burnt umber, light red. Here, I've got a couple of sepias. I used to use a lot of sepia for tone studies, but I've sort of quit on that for, for the time being. And this uh, Windsor Blue, which is a deadly colour, I have to say, if you use it, if you're, if you're tempted to use it, that's artist quality, be very careful, it, it, it overwhelms. And being artist quality, <coughs> it overwhelms double. So, uh, right, I'm, I think the paper is bucking for 140 pounds. I've just taped it to my board and I'm going to use my my mops uh, and, and a couple, this mop and a couple of sable. My number six mop hasn't arrived yet so I'm looking forward to use I'm looking forward to using it later. I hope it turns up today so I can, but we're going out for lunch today so I might not be in a state to to paint later on but we'll, we'll see how we go this one's just a little bit too too large just paint all over and just go around round the, uh, the the cottage okay let's just take off some of that excess there Down there. I might, I've got another number. I think this is number eight. Okay, we'll just go down to the water, I think, for the time being. The water's edge. Right, okay, just look at that. Wow. 
Right, now let's get some, some, uh, some of this sliced cobalt. And we'll... Uh, get that nice and mixed. So As you come down to the uh, to the foreground, with this as you can lighten it, and then a little bit of bit of red, just a touch. Okay, I'm going to let that go. Right now, while that's drying off, I'm going to uh, wet. The, the bottom part of this picture now. Let's just go around around that boat, I think. Do a bit on the other side as well. There's some of it unpainted. You see, that's that. This is the lovely brushes these mops, but. Uh, there's no stiffness in them, but then they're not meant for painting, are they really? They're meant for, I think, French polishing. Let's, let's use my sable. Right, okay, a bit of, bit of burnt umber. And we'll just... Bit of, bit of ultramarine. Bit of green, so a bit of hookers. And a bit of bit of cajella. And a bit of raw sienna. A nice bit of Okay, that, that's just a basic sort of laying, keep it wet. And we'll uh, do some, some, let's have some burnt sienna and some hookers. And my ultramarine. I've got a little mask here. I'm trying to show you what I'm doing here. Bit of shadow in there. Okay, uh, just wait for that to dry off a little bit more. I might give it a bit of a hand with a hair dryer, so I take your headphones off. Just want to use a, a neutral colour for the background here. Put 
producer background in here and it merge and we'll put a bit of Payne's Grey, a bit of Payne's Grey, a bit of Ultramarine, a bit of Hookers, a bit of Umber and we'll just drop in some Need some heavier. Okay, a bit, bit more blue. Just adding some texture on that far bank there. Okay, see what happens to that. Let's just straighten up a little bit. Okay. I could probably put in a little bit of a bit of a number. Okay, that'll do that. That will dry, dry, and I can add a bit more if I want. Now I'm going to use a small brush now, a small sable, and I'm going to go around, around this area here with some some green. So we use a bit of hookers and a bit of burnt sienna. Bucagello Careful here. Going to try to leave some sky holes in, in the top of this. Right, let's just fill that in there because I want some darker colours in there. Okay, a bit more. Right, let's put in some ultramarine and some hookers. Burnt Sienna, Hooker's Green, Ultramarine. Just to highlight the roof really. Okay, and we can do a little bit of calligraphy. Bit of dark around that side there. There's a bit of a similar colour to the background there, but we know that.
Okay, so there, there are our trees. Let's just put a little bit heavier on the top there. Okay, so we've got the uh, air holes. Now we need a swig of tea. Right, now I'm going to wet the foreground, or the water, shall I say. Well, that's nice and dry now, so a bit of clean water. And we'll just keep a bit of a gap between the the beach in the distance and then we'll, we'll dry brush some sky, a bit of cobalt uh, I've got this thing here I'm going to just put something behind that I can find something that I use but as you can see, chaos here, yeah, chaos. I've got some blocks of oh yeah. Just to lift this up because otherwise my hand just bangs on the uh, on that. So uh, right, that's better. Sorry about that. I'll be there. Yep, we're still there. Okay, so the cobalt blue. Okay, and we'll put in a bit of that background colour. <coughs> right, okay, and we'll just a little bit of a dry brush further up there. Okay, that'll do. We can a little bit of uh, heavier stuff in that foreground water. Okay, that's basically there. A bit heavier, I think. Texture in, in here. No uh, detail in here, just hints at it. So for the darks, just ultramarine and Sienna. Just like sort of sand dunes, just some shadow in there. Okay, so that that's enough for that. We can just put a little bit of a detail there. Dark, dark, dark. Okay, so we've got nice, uh, let's do a bit of dry brushing here. Right, now we'll, we'll concentrate on the house and see how we 
go, right, now the roof, I want, to, I want a burnt sienna roof. I've got water on the right of me, a big pot, and I've got my water little pot here, my extra yoghurt pot. Right, so a burnt sienna roof. I'm not used to painting like this, as you know. This is quite, quite challenging. Just try to leave a little margin of white paper. Now a bit, bit darker, so let's have a bit of, a bit of umber in there. Bit heavier, a bit of ultra in with that burnt umber. Let's give a little bit of it. Variety and a bit of sienna on this roof here. It, it will uh, contrast with the with the um, green. So I want I want darker there. Right, while we're at it, we'll, that's why we'll texture this here. Uh, the, uh, so we uh, can be alone in hooker's green. Well, It's a nice warm in here. And then a bit of blue to that umber. Okay, so that, that's quite simple there. I want just a bit of a wash of that green. Okay, right, we go back to the uh, building now and we use a, a bit of, bit of burnt, burnt umber in there, just on that light wall there. And when we're putting a bit of grey, ultramarine and burnt umber under there. Keeping that tiny margin of white, I don't want it to merge. Okay, and then we're a bit slightly lighter uh, version of that colour on the shadow side. Of that, sorry if I'm masking. Oh, I'll just go over that window door. And I'll detail that when that's dry. So the, now the boat. Uh, uh, we'll have a, just a bit of cobalt. We'll put a bit of shadow under that. Uh, 
Okay, so the light's coming that way, so uh, what should be the red boat, the Sienna boat? Why not? Right, now under that we'll put in a bit of a bit of shadow. Okay, that's all. Hopefully that just... Okay. Well, I'll, I'll put a bit of detail on, on this for sure here. Right, I just want to just get some shadowy colour. Now, uh, I deliberately put out some, some cab cabin red yesterday. So we'll put a... And a bit of blue. Just to give a bit of scale to everything, it's probably a bit big actually. Uh, probably should have put his head on. Let's make him a bit smaller. Alright, I need a bit of detail on this side. Then I'm going to lift out some of that there for a couple of little boats. So let's get some dark, some burnt umber and some grey. Okay. <coughs> now I want dark, so I'm going to use some Payne's Grey, I think. Payne's Grey. I think that's Payne's Grey. And some Burnt Sienna. Just some uh, bits and pieces on the beach. Okay, let's uh, put a Just some, some tiny
Okay, that'll do. That's, that's uh, enough. Like that's just. Right, a little couple of more birds up in this lovely blue sky here. Okay, now I was going to lift out, wasn't I? So let's uh, do that bit of tissue paper. So I've done my tea. Uh, damp brush. Just adds a little bit of detail on the horizon there. Let's just take a little bit more of that. You know I'm not nautical. So I'm going to just put a little bit of okay, that'll that'll do. That's all I'm gonna do for that one. I'm going to put it in a mouse and see what it looks like. Let's have that one. Okay, so there we are, just quite a simple scene really, <coughs> just a basic drawing and, well, let's zoom in. So there we are, it's, it's, it's uh, nothing very difficult there. I think the main thing about it is is to wait for various passages to dry even if you have to use a hair dryer uh, th that way you don't get too much blending that you didn't really intend the background there's very little detail on that it looks it because i've just dropped color in to the wet and let it bleed out but then that gives that distant feel and i've used a sort of a neutral tint at the back it's not neutral tint, it's made from a bit of uh, hooker's green, a bit of blue. A uh, couple of boats for some detail. I think the house is probably just a bit too small. But anyway, have a go yourselves and, and, and see what you make of it. I'm, I'm using these brushes at the moment. And hopefully my smaller one of these will turn up tonight. And, I, and I'll see what it does, or by this afternoon anyway. Uh, but keep the foregrounds very simple. Don't add too much. I think with watercolour, less is more. But there's always a temptation to put in more. Okay, thanks for watching. Let's just come out of that again and show you the whole picture. Thanks for what oh, we'll come out and make it a bit bigger. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.